Awo, Yikrita. Yes, I forgive I and I for that. That was a unexpected interruption right there. But let's continue with this. We call this um, a rebuttal to the devil's advocate. And the particular point in that is going to be on um, turn the other cheek. And as we were saying, that many times, and we have to remember that for 400 plus years, not only was the whitewashed image or the false image and humanity of Yeshua HaMoshiach um, um, perpetrated and, and indoctrinated and, and whipped and beat into the lost sheep, but also a perverted gospel, a false gospel, another gospel, and even the, the scriptures, the New Testament points out where Hawari Apollos or the Apostle Paul he speaks to that particular matter about another gospel, that if ones were to come with another gospel or another Yeshua, that ones and ones would gladly accept it. So in a sense, Huaria Paulos or Paul, he was even prophesizing because he was speaking to the Jews, or more correctly, according to the true interpretation of history, or our I and I story, the black Jews. In fact, we said this before, and let's just put this into context. Because we may read the Bible, and we may even be in the Orthodox Church, so forth and so on. But the key is the language, and the key is the true history, and the key is learning and studying to show I and I self the proof. As work man and work woman, that need not be ashamed, rightly doing what? Rightly dividing, to say, explaining the word of truth. So when we hear this turn the other cheek and this peace and love, sort of a thing. I say, well, where did they get this from? Because I'm studying the scripture in its true context and, and, and history, especially from an Ethiopian um, perspective and through Ethiopian spectacles, from a, from a true black perspective. And not black in the sense of so much black supremacy, but more in the sense of God, Jah supremacy. You know what I'm saying? It just so happens that the original man, Adam, a black man, an Ethiopian, and so it happens that Yeshua HaMushi, our Lord and Savior, is also racially, ethnically speaking, a black man, an Ethiopian, an Afro-Shemite, in other words. Now, this is, this is the truth that Rastafari revelation has revealed to us. Now, in the teaching of His Majesty, He points us to Yeshua HaMushi, to Jesus Christos, to Jesus Christ, and to the Bible. But it's not in this whitewashed, counterfeit perversion. You know what I'm saying? So many have replaced the image in the sense of the blonde hair, blue eyed, um, so called Jesus. You know what I'm saying? But they haven't studied the word and replaced the false teaching or the other gospel that has crept in. And this point about turn the other cheek, because a lot of folks say, well, you're preaching and teaching the Bible. Well, what about that turn the other cheek? Does that mean if. They beat us down that we're still supposed to just turn the other cheek and just take it and, and the Lord will do something for us or when we, in the by and by, we'll get pie in the sky or something like that. No, 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 no. John, I, no, I love that at all. You over Sam, because that's not truth. So she mentioned uh, Barbara Makita Blake Hanna or Makita Blake Hanna because many of them say um, Makita actually is Makita. You see, but you would not know that unless you go to the language. You see, because the language is the key of culture. So we say Rastafari is culture, as, as in this particular lecture here on Rastafari and religion. Ones would say, well, it's, it's culture, you know what I'm saying, or it's spirituality. What does the King of Kings teach, I and I? Concerning culture, he says the language. What does the scripture say? He says in Zephaniah 3 and 9 um, to verse 10, For then he will turn to the peoples a pure language, that they all may call upon the name of the Lord in one consent. So if we look among I and I selves right now, in the various different mansions and groups and so forth and so on, as Rastafari. And we say, well, I and I need unity. We need to come together. Have we come together around the teachings of His Majesty? You understand? And that means that when we learn the teaching of His Majesty, we have to check ourselves. Wait, you know, we'll take that, take that beam out of our own eyes 
by looking into the teaching of the King of Kings, because many things that we've picked up as Rasta or Rastafari may be true, may not be true. But, but what's the standard? What is the standard? Is it this mansion or is it that mansion? Is this brethren or this bread drain or is it, is it this elder or that elder? Or what is the standard? The standard must be the teaching of His Majesty. Give I and I the teaching of His Majesty. Can we not want the devil's philosophy? And, and like I said, this is not a personal issue. But we've had to check I and I ourselves as we study the Word, as we study the teaching of the King of Kings, as we head rest, as we meditate upon this. Is oh, whoa, I and I thought that was the right way to do it. And I've I'm, I'm been doing it like that. But now I learn that the King of Kings teach this. And that this is the right way to do. So what do you do? You repent. You have a change of mind. You understand? You weave that out. You understand? Day by day, little by little, you, you, you maintain consciousness. You meditate upon this word. But first, you must study it. So a lot of us have maybe have left, you know, Eurocentric um, culture and customs and get into more African things, so forth and so on. But we have not gone to the root you know what I'm saying? And the root is the teaching of His Majesty that points us to the Scripture. And if we want to get into the true culture, we have to do it through the language because that's what His Imperial Majesty, I and I, Godfather, the King of Kings, teaches I and I. So, with that being said, make I and I, um, mm -hmm. just take one, one more. Don't be offended. Please do not be offended. Okay, but tomorrow what the message could do, so how do I unlock? What we're going to touch on right here is we're going to go to the verse that people often um, quote but misapply. You understand? They, they use it as a sound bite. Turn the other cheek. Are we to turn the other cheek to injustice? Are we to turn the other cheek to wickedness? Is this what Christ has taught us? Let's look at the word. So when we get into the Word, we have to go to the first book. And for disciples, this is a very good review. You understand, we often say from chapter 1 of Ma Mateo's Wengel, or Matthew's Gospel, to chapter 13 is almost like going through elementary school. And in a sense, getting to chapter 13, where the mysteries are disclosed, is like high school. But we'll get into that perspective of our education, of our Bible study, at another time, Yah willing, Yah willing. Now, right here, it is uh, chapter 5, right? Chapter 5, and I think it's at verse 39. At verse 39, it says, But I say to you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, Turn to him the other also, period, full stop. Now, folks, take this, and this is also part of the, the 400 plus years of um, spiritual Willie Lynchism. You understand? And they teach us this. You understand? Yet, we say America is a Christian nation and England is a Christian empire, so forth and so on. Yet, we don't see them practicing that themselves, first and foremostly. You understand? If the terrorists come over here and bomb them, they just don't turn the other cheek or whatnot. They go after those terrorists, those who have hurt them or killed them, so forth and so on. It's not to get into all 9-11 inside jobs, so forth and so on. It's just a basic, a basic um, example we're seeking to give, right? Now, the first thing we need to do when we are reading the scripture and, and reading a particular verse is to find out, well, who said it? when they said it, and what sort of situation they said it, but most importantly, to whom was this given? Did Yeshua HaMoshiach, did Jesus Christos Gitach, did he say this to the Romans? Was this given to the Romans? Was it said to the Chinese? Was it said to the Southeast Asians? Was it said to the Europeans, the Greeks? Who did Yeshua HaMoshiach say this to? Well, in order to understand that, if you're looking in the Schofield Reference Bible and you see the red letter, you have to go all the way forward to the beginning of the chapter. And this is the Sermon on the Mount. So who is Yeshua HaMoshiach? Who is Jesus Christ? Yesus Christos. Yenaz Yesus. 
Jesus of Nazareth. Whom was he speaking to? Was he speaking to the Romans? Was he speaking to Pontius Pilate? Is this what Yeshua HaMoshiach said to Pontius Pilate? Well, when I'm teaching the people is to turn the other cheek, so, you know, we don't mean no problems or whatnot for you. Who was Yeshua HaMoshiach speaking to? That's the first important point. He was not speaking to the Romans. He was not speaking to the Gentiles. He was speaking to the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. And it's very clear if you study the Gospels, you'll see that he says, I have not come, but to the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. So he came to raise them. And it's through the Beta Israel that that ever living eternal gospel of good news would go to the world. Now, in the revelation of Rastafari, do we have that opportunity to finally fulfill that will? So there is an ethnic level, there's a so called racial level. You know what I'm saying? Christ came to save his what? People. That's what it says. Jesus came to what? Save his people. Now, they say, well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is true. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for his lost sheep or his lost people, that if they would receive it, they would be that light to the world, as old Israel was supposed to do in the old covenant, but because of disobedience, because they did not hear the word, you understand, and they did their own things. You understand? And, and this is the situation of our people and black people in particular, this remnant here. But he's speaking um, at the Sermon on the Mount to his disciples and to others of the multitude of the Israelites predominantly. This was not a message to the whole world. This was a message to his people to prepare them. And, and I began to think about this in a way. He was actually speaking to Israel. He wasn't speaking to Rome. He was speaking to Israel because Israel had that responsibility. He was the Messiah, and he is the Moshiach for Israel. That if Israel had faith and obedience in him and through him, they would be that light or that illumination to a world in darkness and in ignorance. But instead, what did the people do? They had to fulfill the prophetic word. They disobeyed 70 A.D., the destruction of Jerusalem. Pastor says that the Jews are of the race of the Ethiopians. Prolem Ethiopian. I think it's that in Latin. Prolem Ethiopian. Of the race. That means that they are black people, in other words. So it's not, don't think it's the racial thing, but overstand the order of the Almighty God. If you really want to understand this word and know the true Yeshua HaMoshiach. So he was speaking to his disciples. You know what I'm saying? He's speaking to his disciples. Very, very clear. But why is he speaking to them this way? Why would he tell us, you know what I'm saying, or our ancestors then, but this word is still vital for us. Now let's understand. We always, not we, but many, always interpret or misinterpret this in a so-called white supremacy and black impoverishment situation like when they say forget slavery, forget reparations, forget repatriation. So we say WTF. You know what that means. You text message. You know what that means. We don't have to say it. We don't feel like saying it, but you know what? It's like what the bleep expletive deleted, deleted, deleted. What are you talking about? Because you have some white friends, some European friends, so we have to forget that. And then and this is what, as they say, it's in my craw. You know what I'm saying? You're going to invoke Yeshua. Yednaz Aretu Iesus. Simu Yitzbarek. Leul Yitzbarek. You know what I'm saying? His name is blessed. The Most High is blessed. You're going to invoke His name. And this teaching, out of context, is totally out of context. You know, it's like, it's like they say, um, it, it begins at charity, love begins at home, right? This is what Christ was teaching in his Deca Mezamorit, his Talmudim, that this charity must begin at home. He had to restore, just like now amongst us, even right now. We have more tolerance, you understand, for the continual injustices done to us, and we would take this word, you understand, and twist it and apply it, you understand, to the enemy, to turn the other cheek to the enemy, and yet we don't turn the other cheek to one another. We're not practicing this charity. 
or this love, because the word charity means love in the King James Bible. We don't practice this love, you know what I'm saying, at home, and this is why we're disorganized, you know what I'm saying, and cannot spread abroad, you know what I'm saying, and the world remains in this situation. You know what I'm saying? The situation of this world, we like to say, is white supremacy. No, really, it's the lost sheep not being obedient. You know what I'm saying? If we look into the scripture, we recognize who we are and why and how we ended up in this predicament. This is not justify what the Gentiles and what the enemies did to us. You know what I'm saying? But it proves to us, one, who we are, and two, why we're in this situation, and three, how to come out of this, to repent, to have a change of mind by taking on this word and studying it, not just repeating this foolishness that we have to turn the other cheek, you know, saying, to the so-called um, European or the white man or the aggressor or the Babylonian, and yet we don't even practice turning the other cheek to our brother and our sister, and this is what Christ was teaching them when he says, turn the other cheek. He is speaking to his, and, and you know, when you would read through it, it's very interesting. When you read through it, he says, go to your brother. He didn't say, well, if you remember you did something to a Roman, go to the Rome. He said, go to your brother. He was teaching brotherly love. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only way the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, can rest amongst us and bless us and strengthen us and give us the power to overcome. You understand? And to restore this world, you understand, into its true purpose in God. Remember, this all comes from Adam. Adam, our ancestor, was a damn fool. The first Adam. But the second Adam, you understand, is Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? Which we know as the black Christ. You know, manifested in the person of the king of kings of Ethiopia, Gormawi, Kadamawi, Haila, Shalase, in this present time of revelation. So, think about it for a moment. Did um, his imperial majesty, when the, when the Italians invaded Ethiopia, did he turn the other cheek? You know what I'm saying? Did he turn the other cheek to them? You understand and say, well, okay, well, I don't want to fight you back because you Christian, we Christian, and so I turn out. No, he, he didn't do that. You understand? So let us just just get wrap our 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 attention on that word. In fact, I mentioned this before, and let's look at Israel in that time. What was Israel like? The Black Jews or Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrews, they were living in their own country. You know what I'm saying? They were living still in a portion of their own land, which was under Roman Gentile occupation. You know what that's like? That's like living in the ghetto, in a sense, right? And you're under the same sort of occupation with the police, with the so forth. And so forth. But they were in their own land. You know what I'm saying? Now, we know already what this, this ghetto life has done. You know what I'm saying? To the love among one and one, among black people, even over here. You know what I'm saying? Where somebody accidentally steps on your shoe, you know what I'm saying? And you love materialism because you are spiritually dead. You want to kill your brother. You want to hurt them for that material thing. You don't know how to turn the other cheek to that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, even among many of our eyes, Rastafari, ones holding grudges for years and years and years against their brother and sometimes over foolish stuff, that if they were really to look into the teaching of his majesty, they would weep and bawl in repentance and let that go, you understand, and then they would be freer, then their conscience would be clearer, then more unity or inity would truly be possible, you understand, and probable, and it would be, you understand, so right here when we read in this word, it's so very interesting when he says about agree with your adversary. Your adversary among your own people, among Beta Israel. He came to save Beta Israel, Israel from their sin. He didn't say he came to save the world from their sin. No, he came to save Beta Israel from their sin. So there's an order to this. There's an order to this. You understand? Know he came first to his own. And many of his own did not receive him. And then that grace went forward to others. And then the Gentiles were grafted in 
as wild olive trees into our own vine. And hence we have the European Jews and, and hence we have um, the, the European Christians and others so forth and so on. But when we trace it all forward to its root, we find the root and the truth of it is in Africa, is in Ethiopia. And that's why it said they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. This is why it says they shall see the king in that land that's very far off. You know, and this is why it says this man was born there. This is why it says Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to God. You know, and, and so forth and so on. A another point I want to make mention. Because if you, if you read the whole context of it, right? Let's just go to, this is, a, this is in a section that's called Jesus and Divorce. It's called Yeshua and Divorce. And then there's a CF or confer, which means to um, compare Matthew 19, verses 3 to 11, Mark chapter 10, verses 2 to 12, and 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 to verse 15. And here's what it says, verse 31. It says, this is Yeshua speaking, Jesus Christos, Getachin speaking, the son of the king of kings, the Lord of lords is speaking. He says, it hath been said, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Is this what the Romans did? Or is this what Beta Israel did? Well, let's read on. But I say to you, so to whom is he speaking to? The first thing, you, who is he speaking to? Speaking to Beta Israel. That whosoever shall put away his wife, saving, except for the cause of fornication, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. All right? Verse 33, 3, 3. Again, in Degana, again, ye have heard, you have shimmad, you have heard, you have sima, 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 here, you have heard that it hath been said, that it hath been said. By them of old time, like we hear things from the past, people used to say, and back in the days, the old time, right? People have said, uh, it's been said by them of old time, really from the Kedem, in the Ethiopic Kedem, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform to the Lord thine oaths. You're not going to for, well, I swear, such and such, swear, I swear on this, I swear on that. We're not to swear. And even within um, Federation, I'll be hearing sometime one to one say, yeah, I swore oath. I swore oath. There's no swearing in our divine heritage, period. So check yourself on that. You might say, oh, well, it's just a word. You know what I mean. But there's no swearing. You don't understand word, sound, and power. There's no swearing. So he said, not to forswear thy, thyself, but to perform. To perform, that means to do John's work. To perform to Adonai, to the Lord, thine oaths. Whatever you say, yes, I will do it. Well, I, I, yes, I will take care of that. that Jah ja willing, do it. Jah willing. Jah give you the will, do it. But I say to you, swear not at all. Don't swear. Don't swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is Jah's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Now in Rastafari Revelation, we would say, neither by Addis Ababa, for it is the city of the great king of kings. Neither, verse 36, shalt thou swear by thy head. Because that's how they should swear. I swear by my head. I swear by my hair. I swear by the... Because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Because even if you swear, you don't have the power to make one hair white or black. You understand? So don't swear. But let your communication, let your communication be yea, yea, awo, awo, or nay, nay. Idelim, idelim. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. You see, there's a teaching in that, too, that we've taught on. And we've got to share that teaching with the eye. But basically, don't be double-minded. Don't be yay and nay, yay, yay, nay, nay. You know, like, like 
Like people say, oh, yeah, I used to support reparations. I used to support repatriation. Yes, to support these things. You know what I'm saying? But I don't support them anymore. Well, what, what happened? What, what's, what's that double-mindedness coming from? You know what I'm saying? It says right here, it cometh of kufu, of evil. You know what I'm saying? Verse 38 says, ye have heard that it hath been said. You've heard that it has been said. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Now, you notice how Yeshua, when he's speaking to the regular people, the regular, the regular folks, like the ghetto folks, not the teachers, not the religious people who are like, we're like the Jews, the religious authority, not speaking to them, but speaking to the regular, the regular people. You know what I'm saying? He's saying, you've heard this, right? You'll you're, you're know what this is. You might not have read it, but you've heard this. But whenever he's talking to the, you know, to the intellectuals and stuff like that and to the religious authorities like the Sanhedrin and the Jews, what the Bible called, quote, the Jews, he always says to the religious leaders, isn't it not written? Isn't it written? Haven't you read? But to these, he's saying, so we can't even tell what sort of folk, if we would study the scripture, what sort of folk he was speaking to. He was speaking to the regular folks. You know what I'm saying? The regular folks. Maybe they don't read and write all that well, but they've heard these things. So he's saying to them, you know, you've all heard this, you've heard that, but let me tell you this. Let me tell you the truth, right? You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You know what that's called? In Rome, that's called the tex, um, 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 oh, oh, was it tex leonis? Tex leonis or tax leonis, right? The you know, the, you know, you do me this, I'm going to do you that. You know what I'm saying? It's like when, when folks say, I'm going to get even with so-and-so. Why ain't get even? Oh, so-and-so did me bad. They did me wrong. I'm going to get even with them. Well, what they did to you was like a devil, right? What they did, it was like a devil to you, right? Right? It was like Satan to you, right? So you're going to get even. So you're going to become the devil. You see what happens? Don't, don't, don't get even in that sense with evil because if you do, you'll be just like them. You know what Verse 39, then it says, after that, but I say to you that ye resist not evil, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Verse 40, and if any man will sue thee at the law, and in other words, if any man will sue you at Torah, and will sue you at the law, for the law, Torah, the Torah, the scriptures, right? And take away thy coat. Let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, go with him too. You know, like if a brethren said, yo, can you try this for me? Such and such. Be willing to, you know, assist one's brethren. So it's speaking about, about restoring that brotherly love. Because, you know, they got, they got all legalistic back then. Similar to what's happening with the, the beloved Ethiopian World Federation. They get, get all legalistic and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? And now it's all wrapped up in law. So that brotherly love has been adversely affected. You know what I'm saying? And our divine heritage is based on that love of Jah and the love of our brother man. Yeshua said it when he said, when they asked him about the commandment, what's the greatest of all commandment? And he said, the first, to love the Lord thy God with your, your whole heart, mind, body, and soul with your full triune, triune being, and to love thy brother, thy neighbor, thy bread companion. You understand? The one you suck with as yourself. You understand? That is the teaching of his imperial majesty. Because if we dem when we demonstrate that, the divine power, that, that, that has, because then the power of Jah rests upon us in fullness, in spirit, and in truth. And there's no evil, you understand, no, no, no Gentile, no Babylon. There's nothing that can resist that. But you see, they keep us divided and conquered because ones are not even overstanding this word properly. They take down the white Jesus image, but they still are talking the white Jesus misinterpretation of this word. So turning the other cheek was not meant for the so-called stranger, firstly and foremostly. No, it was meant for I and I. It was meant for how are we. He, you know what, what Christ says? You could tell who are my disciples by how much love. He says by how much love. How much love they have one for another. I mean, I'm sure you've, you've read that before. You, you've heard that before. He said you can tell who are my disciples. 
by how much love they have one for another. So what we're getting here in the Sermon of the Mount, Sermon on the Mount, and the expanded of it is basically he's going through point by point. He's he he's trying to explain it in the different situations of their lives and of our lives. Different type of situation that you know that 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 make us um, that bring chaos and disorder and distrust amongst us. So when we now have to do the real big work, you understand, know ones and ones are disorganized, or saying, I don't join no organization. So that means you prefer to stay in disorganization. You prefer to stay in disunity and disorganization. You know understand, it's not the organization that's, that's bad. You know understand, why a lot of organizations get adversely affected is because the people, because the unrepentant hearts and minds of the people you understand? In these organizations, even in some of the churches, it's the same way. It's not the organization. Everything that you accomplish that's, that's progressive and real needs to be organized. You understand? So it's not the organization. And when folks say, well, that's why I don't join organization, that's a, I won't even call it a cop-out. That, that, is, that, is like, that is almost like um, suicide in a sense because you're killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you're thinking that organization is bad, but yet we are in an organization, whether we call it the United States of America, in an organization. And we know that if there are true elected people, you understand, who are really true blue and don't compromise, you know what I'm saying? They will use the organization progressively and positively. But it comes down to trust, it comes down to faith, you know what I'm saying? It comes down to what one regards as value, what does one worth ship. You understand? What does one worth ship? You understand? And for us as um, black folks, you understand, or lost sheep, you know, we've been through, you know, we've been through the washer, the dryer, the ringer, you understand, so forth and so on. Now, here it says right here, it says, um, it says, Ain sila ain, tarsim sila tars in the tabale, senta chikwal. Inegin, ila chikwalo. Kufuin, at Kufuin, evil, don't resist evil. You know, someone say, no, you got to resist evil. You know Tai Chi? I mean, you've heard of Tai Chi. And if you study some in martial arts, um, there are certain styles of martial arts where you really don't resist the enemy, but you allow the enemy's, you understand, own aggression to work against them. That's the principle right here that Christ was teaching them. Spiritually, kufuwen atakawamu. Do not resist evil, but allow, uh, allow, like it says, allow um, evil to destroy the wicked. In other words, don't you get even? Don't you be like them? Observe what they observe, but don't do after their works. Is the teaching of I nine masters? Is darugin, ain gun chehin betifi snag lemi meta hulu hulatenyawin degmo. Azorlet. Now, when you understand now the context of that, it wasn't saying that, you know, if, 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 if the Romans, you understand? If the, see, the people were concerned with dealing with Rome. It's like many of us are concerned in dealing with white supremacy. We want to deal with white supremacy. Yeah, we want to fight about Babylon, bring down Babylon. But look, if Babylon fell right now, this very moment, are we really ready to pick up the pieces, you understand, and to function the kingdom, the government of God on earth? You understand, with these little simple issues that we still have of distrust, you understand, in I and I, heart and among I and I, and yet, for all that the enemies and the Gentiles have done, you understand, we still live in a Gentile society. We still rely on Gentile light and gas and power and so food supply, too coming from the Gentiles, with all that we already know, knowing what we know, you understand? But when a brethren or a sisterin does something that is not even a, a high crime or a misdemeanor or treason or anything, we're already ready to say, I mean, I deal with that person for life, and, and I'm righteous. No, you're making your own righteousness, you understand? You have not conformed yourself to the righteousness of the King of Kings and his Christ. I said I would be brief on that particular issue, but 
it's, it, it's, I can't say it's amazing. It, it's, it's, it's somewhat saddening. You know what I'm saying? Not too much because not I and I, but it's, it's like you shake your head and say, wow. You know what I'm saying? Education really is the key. You know what I'm saying? Because people are reading that and thinking that this was given to the whole world. You know what I'm saying? Or they read the Old Testament and don't recognize that it's speaking to a particular tribe, a particular people. You know what I'm saying? And that that people had a particular commission, but yet they did not live up to it, you know what I'm saying, in the Old Covenant. You know what I'm saying? The Moshiach was sent, Yeshua was sent to help to restore them, to provide, provide for them a, a way out of that darkness. You understand that ignorance, you understand, and many even then still turned their backs on that. It's just like with the King of Kings. Many of the black folks still turn their backs on that. And if you really look at the history of that particular period of time in the 20th century, it's going to become just like folks are going to say, what was wrong with that people? They would go down to Egypt, you understand, while the opportunity was there to come out of Babylon. And then look at the 40 years. Look at what happened in the 40 years. I was watching a program about um, PBS program Endgame, right? It's talking about AIDS in black America and talking about how, you know, black folks were still holding to those, those um, Willie Lynch-isms, you understand, about not really, you know, trusting one another to communicate what was going on. So while they were keeping silent about it, not willing to say anything about it, and even the churches, you know what I'm saying, not even getting involved, and even many of them in the churches also got infected because nobody was saying nothing. Nobody wanted to say nothing. You over and I thought, wait, this Torah portion is talking about how the plagues were, plagues came out against the people. And you see what's going on with this people now, with this lost sheeple right now. And it's like the same sort of plagues are 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 upon us as a people. And it's so interesting that whenever a so called white and black thing, these ones will talk about turning the other cheek. It's like I heard a joke one day. I wasn't a joker, but it sounded like a joke at first, but then I recognized how serious it was that, you know, while Doctor King may have talked about nonviolence, let's ask the question, did he beat his children? You know a lot of blacks will say nonviolence, but did they beat their children? Did they beat their wives? Did some of the some of the wives beat the husbands? You understand? Did some of the children beat the parents? Are they not beating each other today? Where's all that turned all the cheek? And, and just let bygones be bygone. You understand? But to you know, to the fringe, you know, to the to the former slave masters and slave owners and their descendants. You understand? They're turning the other cheek. So they may have taken down the white Jesus from a lot of these black churches, but still it is there in their consciences. You understand? Because they have not truly been born again. They have not truly, you understand, studied and show themselves approved to God as workmen that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And you know what, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of preachers and pastors that would try to say, no, 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 you are wrong. This was talking to everybody in the world. Really? Really? So Jesus was born to save everybody in the world, and why the Bible says he was there to save his people? Why does the Bible say, I have not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Christ clearly says, is in other words, Jah sent Christ. Christ was there to get us right. You understand the Moshiach was there. So, and then he sent them forward. He sent the, the, those Beta Israel who heard and received forward. You understand to be the emissaries of this glorious gospel. And the same order exists in Rastafari. So let's get our house in order and stop being the devil's advocate, because the devil is already judged. The devil is already judged. See, the question really is this, is what choice will we make? You know what I'm saying? This is a time of, 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 of grace and mercy, you know what I'm saying, still for the lost sheep and still for humanity. What choices will we make? You know what I'm saying? Will we go with Antichrist, you know what I'm saying, or will we remain faithful and true to the King of Kings, 
and his Christ. So, brothers and sisters, watch and pray for 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 the lost sheep and all of I and I. Like we said, this is not a personal, we're not doing this as a personal thing, you know, to Barbara, Makita, Blake, Hannah, you understand? But just to think like, wow, one who has been in this movement so long and has championed this issue, you understand? All of a sudden is having a about face. Yovas, but it did say that in the last days and time, you know, the last days and times would be perilous times. Make I and I continue to pray, my brothers and sisters, and work. So I hope that you're able to kind of get this. And you know, before we just before we go, you understand? Before we go forward, there's there's, there's one other. You understand? There's one other thing. You understand? There's one other thing here that we want to share with you. You remember before Christ was crucified, and we're going to John's Gospel. He gave what's known as a high priestly prayer. You understand? And, it, and, and in his high priestly prayer, he basically straight, straight out says, you understand, that he is praying for us. He is not praying for the world. And I find it to be so very interesting. He's saying that he prays for us, and he's not praying for the world. He's praying for those whom have been given to him out of, right, out of the world. Here it goes right here. It says, Father Abba, uh, John chapter 17, the prayer of intercession. And people, people, I and I people, in this day and time, I and I need that intercession of Jah and Joshua, of the Father and Son, more than ever. You understand? More than ever in this time. So these words spake Yeshua and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father Abba, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. See the relationship of the father and the son? This is real, my brothers and sisters. And this is life eternal. This is life eternal. This is the real reason why true Rastafari say, I and I not die. Even if you see ones and ones die like they say in the world, you understand? We know that them not die because they're faithful to the King of Kings and His Christ. This is eternal life or life eternal that they might know, not believe, not guess, not hope here, but it says that they might know. There's things that we do um, have faith in. There's things that we do hope for. But there's certain things that we got to know. You know, we got to know. And Yeshua says right here that this is life eternal. That they, speaking of I and I, that they is we, that they is I and I. That I and I might know thee, that we might know the Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? His Father, our Father, His God, our God, manifest in the person of the King of Kings, Edomawi Haile Shalase, Haile Selassie the first, that they might know thee, the only true God. That, that's interesting. That means that they are gods, but they're not true. They're false gods, fake gods. You understand? And people are worshiping these false gods every day. And the biggest false god, or one of them, is 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 the so-called dollar bill, y'all. You understand? That's why they can't use the money, but they get used by money. And they sell themselves for money. You understand? But here's what Christ says, that this is life eternal, that they might know thee, that they might know thee, Abba, and Jesus Christus, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee. He has honored Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin, on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Verse 5, And now, Abba Toi, Abba, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. With thine own self, thy own ras, thy own person, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name to the men 
which thou gavest me out of the world. Now, let's ask ourselves, well, who were these that he's praying for? Was he praying for Pontius Pilate? Was he praying for Augustus Caesar? Was he praying for um, Genghis Khan or, or, or some other Gentile or Edom? Who was he praying for? He's praying for those Israelite and the few faithful, you understand, that were given out of Beta Israel and the tribes, which you gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me, gavest them me, and they have kept thy word, as we must keep his word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So it's interesting, he's saying that to the, to, to the Father and concerning them and us, that we are to know that Yeshua was speaking of his Father. And he's even, as we study this even more, we get to recognize that this is the, 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 the missing key in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Or the key that opens that mystery truly of Rastafari revelation. And every time ones and ones will go to his majesty and say, the Rastafarians say that you are God or they say you are Christ. His majesty never said, no, I'm not. Even in that interview, you have to listen to that interview. He said, I've heard of this idea. Yeah, I've also spoken to some Rastafarian, and he spoke about the mortality, because remember, mortality proceeds in Christ and through Christ, that immortality. He was demonstrating the way of Yeshua as being faithful and true to the lost sheep, because for most of us, we would not be in the Bible and, and, and be followers of Yeshua HaMoshiach unless one bore faithful and true witness, and that one for I and I, is the king of kings, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda, our God Father and King of Kings. So it says, For I have given to them the words. It's all about words. Remember I'm saying about words, words which thou gavest me. And they have received them, they have cabalized them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed, or my men had faith, true and faithful witness, that thou didst sent me. I pray for them, verse 9, I pray for them. Who does Yeshua pray for? Yeshua prays for them, and he prays for us. He prays for them in that time, and I and I in this time. It's like His Majesty's Autobiography, Book 1, the preface. Go read this for a moment. And see that prayer his majesty gives. Then at the end, he discloses a mystery. He says, May our kith and kin and the brethren who will rise up in the future take note of the word that you have spoken. Without me, ye can do nothing. Quoting John chapter 15, verse 5. And how about the interview with Oriana Falachi, where she keeps asking him about magic when you die, when you die, when you die. And he answers her, but gives her the overstanding, but she can't understand his majesty, the overstanding. And then she asks him another question. His majesty says, um, he says, um, like, what is it like to be reigning as the emperor and be a part of all these great changes going on? And he says that, it, it, like, his greatest pleasure is to serve Ethiopia. And we Ethiopians at home and abroad as a, as a father serves his son. And I've told a couple of brethren and sisters about this, and I said, wait, when I first read that, I said, wait, this, this, it seems like he's saying that to be emperor of Ethiopia, he is serving as a father would serve his son. But we said, wait, so-called in the world, in the world is not that way. In the world, it's the son serving the father. But in the gospel and the mystery of the gospel, you understand know, the mystery of God in Christ is the Father that actually serves the Son. If you, if you understand what Christ is saying right here, he says that he prays for them. He prays for I and I. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. They are thine. So he's saying, well, the ones you've given me, I actually give to you. And ones wonder why did certain ones recognize his imperial majesty? Why did certain ones in that time recognize who his majesty were, was and, and, and they even connected that with the biblical, scriptural, and historical picture? 
of we as the once lost but now found data is Arayel. He says he prays for them. He prays for I and I. He says, I pray not for the world. He says he doesn't pray for the world. The world can and will, if it does not heed, will go to hell. Yovas. It says, um, it says all nations that forget Jah are turning to hell. You wonder why things are getting so bad all over. People going crazy. It said all nations that forget Jah. They took the Bible out of the classroom. They took prayer out of school. You know, they put Jah on the back burner. You understand? Know yeah, people can say things were had problems then, but 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 you see how much better things got. I'm being sarcastic. You think how much better it got? It didn't get much better. You got much 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 worse. It's almost like the Bible and 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 school and prayer in the classroom. It's like when it says in Thessalonians that there was something that restrains this this, this man of lawlessness. You understand this? this final time of judgment, and when that's taken out of the way, what was taken out of the way? The word of Jah, the word of God, all right? And it says right here, he says right here, and all mine are thine. So everything that belongs to Yeshua belongs to the Father. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, Kedus Abbot, or Abba Kedus, keep through thine own name, Kedamawi Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase first, the first power of the Trinity, the triune God, the God of Abraham, the God of Yisahak, the God of Yaakov, the God of the living. So he said, John, I die, the God of the living, not the God of the dead. Those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. So it's speaking about the Father, it's speaking about the Son, and speaking about the true and the faithful ones. But he says they were, they're not three. You understand? Know they're not three. They are one. You see the mystery of the Trinity, the mystery of the triune God. He goes on to say, while I was with them in the world, I kept them, I protected them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them, and none of them is lost. They were, they were lost, but he came to save his people, so none of them are lost now. He came for the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, but the son of perdition, the son of damnation, that the scripture might be fulfilled. You know, like they say, there's always one, right? He chose 12, and he says one of them was a devil, right? And now, and now I come to thee. Now come I to thee. And these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. This is ites here. That they may have what? Joy. Not Babylon about Babylon, that we might have joy in the King of Kings and his Christ, and be overcomers not overcome by the world. Verse 14, I have given them thy word. He has given us the Father's word. And the world hath hated them. The world is the hater. I'm not, not the hater. Yeshua is the lover of humanity. I'm not, not the hater. The world hates them. Why? Because of the Father's word. And this is why they've hated Edomawi Haile Selassie as well. If they hate the Son, they will hate the Father. Because they are not of the world. They are not of the world. I and I are not, we in the world, but we're not of the world. But you see a lot of this worldliness is, is, you know, you see a lot of this worldliness. Even as I am not of the world, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from evil, that you should protect them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify, make them holy, make them kedus, 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 through thy truth. It's the truth that makes I and I holy, set apart. All right? Thy word, Jah's word, is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. Yeshua was making himself holy, set apart, that they 
also might be sanctified in the truth, in the onet, in the truth. Neither pray I for these alone. So he said he's not just praying for those at that time, first century A.D., but for them also which shall believe, which shall have a main true and faithful witness on me, on Yeshua HaMoshiach, through their word, that they all may be one as thou, Abba, Abba, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one, one in us, one in us, that the world may have our means, the world may have true and faithful witness that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them the honor. So we carry honor as Rastafari, that they may be one, one unity, even as we are one, one united. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect, perfect in one, in oneness. To what it though? The ritual hymenot. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Abba, Abba toi, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. That they may behold my glory, my honor, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Right there. Go link um, Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. It's very interesting. O righteous Father, O righteous Father, O Sadiq Abbat, the world hath not known thee. The world doesn't know his majesty, but I and I and I have known the I, and these have known that thou hast sent I, and I have declared to them thy name. And I will declare it, and he will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them, and I and I all may be one. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Rasta.